to move on. So there we go. So about us, about the organizers, well, we're this team behind DMP Roadmap. That's an international collaboration that's behind the most widely used system for the creating and making use uh, of data management plans. Um, the partners involved in this, I'll be describing this a bit more in a moment. We've been engaged uh, with RDA, in fact, since before its launch 10 years ago here in, in, in Gothenburg via some of the uh, events that led to, to the creation of it. Uh, we organized the session at Plenary 9 in Barcelona all those years ago, which created the DMP working group, some of which we're going to be hearing about today. And partly what I'm trying to get across to you here is we in that team, we like working collaboratively. It's one of the reasons we're here today. Uh, both, we're not just here to tell you about what we've been up to. We're very much here to engage with and get more people involved in the discussions of, about where this is going to go next. So today we're going to hear a bit about how we got to where we are now, what it was it that led to this collaboration being put together, what's available now in this shared code base that we call DMP uh, Roadmap, and a little bit more about how Roadmap is being used to deliver lots of different services uh, around the world, a bit about what's planned for the future, a number of case studies from around the world, uh, and then really, this is where we're getting more to the interactive part of it, and we want to bring you all in. What should we be looking at next? Where should this go? What types uh, of, of, of use cases should we be looking at? And the results of that hopefully will inform the relevant RDA groups. There are a number of them uh, dealing with different aspects of data management planning, some represented in the room today, some not. But it will also involve our development uh, within the, the, the roadmap. Uh, effort. So our aim is that we want to start some conversations here today, but they're not going to end today in this room. We would hope to see effects uh, from those uh, visible in code uh, and services around the world. So a reminder of what uh, our program is. I'm going to be sharing things today. It's my responsibility to keep things uh, to, to time, to keep the conversation civil. So after the welcome from me, we're going to be hearing from one of the co-chairs of the Machine Actionable Data Management Plans Working Group, Thomas Mishka, uh, just explaining where the work in that group uh, is going now. Uh, then uh, my colleague Deanna Sisu and I will be talking uh, about uh, the history and the present state of the DMP Roadmap Project. We'll then be hearing from our colleagues uh, at um, the University of California Curation Center, UC3, Maria Pretzelis and Brian Riley about machine actionable DMPs in DMP Roadmap. Um, then uh, uh, a look uh, through the lens of a particular uh, project about the role of persistent identifiers in enabling machine actionable DMPs. Uh, then a short break. Those of you online will have to make your own arrangements for that. Those of us here, I believe there will be coffee uh, available. And after we have coffee, what could we do but go to Brazil to hear about the implementation uh, of machine actionable DMPs there? That's going to be one of two recorded presentations uh, today. Then Deanna Sizzle will talk to us uh, about one of the services, DMP Online, that's hosted by the Digital Curation Centre that makes use of the shared DMP roadmap code base. We'll then be hearing from Alison Lister in our second recorded presentation uh, of today uh, about the fair sharing service and how it's a content provider that enables machine actionable DMPs. But I believe a colleague of Alice, Alison's is uh, going to be around today to be able to take questions uh, on that presentation uh, if necessary. Then uh, another of the services, uh, DMP Opidor uh, in France, Benjamin Foray is going to be talking about the use of machine actionable DMPs there. Then we're going to get into our discussion groups. That's going to involve all of us here today. We're going to stop listening to others. We're going to start making our own contributions. We'll want you to feedback. We'll say more about that when we get to the session. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, I'll do a brief uh, wrap up. That program is also uh, available online. Those of you uh, in the room should have received, if you want to join the Zoom room as well, uh, to 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 see what's what's happening in the conversation. Do feel free to do that. Uh, if you do, do remember uh, to mute your microphones. Feedback is fun when you're in a heavy metal band. It's not so fun, so much fun when you're uh, in a room uh, like this. Uh, 
So as I said, I'm, I'm here to keep people the time, including myself. I've got three minutes left as far as I can see. Both the Digital Curation Centre and the Research Data Alliance have codes of conduct for events. And I want to remind you to respect the codes as the link there to the code uh, of the DCC. But really more importantly than respecting the codes, the codes are about respecting each other. Uh, let's be kind to each other and respectful uh, when we're, we're engaging uh, in discourse and we're asking questions, when we're passing comments. It's not much to ask, um, but it's good to remind us all uh, occasionally. And more importantly, for those of you in the room, be aware, we have about 100 people joining us uh, online uh, uh, today. Uh, so we're going to be, I have some colleagues uh, who are monitoring the online discussion are going to make sure uh, questions uh, or issues raised there are brought to us uh, in the room today. But bear that in mind. Those of you online, bear in mind the fact we have uh, uh, about, I think it's about 40 of us here uh, in the room uh, today. And again, for those of you who are physically in the room with us today, lunch is available afterwards. Uh, we'd really encourage you to, to stay on both, not just to enjoy a free lunch, but also to take the opportunity to talk with us and indeed to talk uh, with uh, each, each other. And there we are, I said I would describe uh, and we'll go into this in a little more detail later when we talk about the history uh, of, of, of DMP Roadmap. But these uh, are the organizations, DMP Online, the Digital Creation Center, DMP Tool from UC3 in California, DMP Opidor in France, and DMP Assistant in Canada behind your event today. But now uh, I'd like to hand over to Tomasz Mischke, uh, one of the co-chairs of the Machine Actionable uh, data Management Plan Working Group here at the RDA is going to talk to us about the current state of affairs there. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I Today I want to give a quick uh, overview of what MADMPs are and how we started. Uh, a warning, some of you might have seen these presentations in the past plenaries, but always to welcome the newcomers, I want to start from the beginning. And the beginning actually was in 2017 at, uh, at, at, at the, in Edinburgh at the DCC workshop in a very similar setting like here when we all came together to discuss what we could improve with DMPs, how can we make the DMPs better. We uh, had different breakout groups and we identified a set of changes. And one of the things was that we have these uh, DMPs in the traditional form uh, with the human narrative where we talk a lot and researchers are usually not happy with it because they have to keep providing the same information again or they have to write a lot of text and and they see it as an administrative admin 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 ad, something they need to do for administration and and they don't uh, like that so we thought about improving situation and we came up with the idea of machine actionable dmps and if you look at the at the workflow at the side we uh thought that we can automate a lot of things uh for example, uh, if you look uh, how the researcher is creating the, the DMP, they have to go through these steps. So they have to first specify what data they are going to create. So telling us if it's going to be five gigabytes or, or 100 gigabytes or five megabytes, if it's going to be a PDF or a JPEG. And then based on that information at the beginning, we could already suggest them some uh, actions. So for example, we can suggest them uh, where to keep the data, what is the right storage, what would be the right uh, repository for them, how much it will cost, what would be the best license to publish. And this is under the assumption that for the majority of researchers, there are some default actions in an organization or in the scope of the research activity. Of course, if you are special, you know what to do, but many people say, okay, I just want to have a CC by license for my data and that's it. And of course, this includes including other stakeholders to facilitate this process. So we cannot only make researchers responsible for filling out the DMP, but we need to include the infrastructure operators to help with selecting the right uh, place for storage. We have to include the research support early on that they can provide information on license. And the idea is that we don't want to create a lot of overhead for all these people. We want to automate this process. And that's why we have the RDM infrastructure that is able to come up with some of the recommendations. For example, the uh, infrastructure operator has a service that gets information about the amount of data and the size. 
and based on this can automatically say okay you should use this storage system and this cost thousand dollars for example and and so on and so on and of course if there are special cases when it's not so straightforward you can always talk to a person yeah and to make this process possible to happen we identified three necessary things we need to have well-defined well-defined rdm workflows so we must understand who is responsible for what which stakeholder provides which information we need the infrastructure so these services to to connect all these stakeholders and the last but not least we need the common standard to represent information so all these systems all these stakeholders must get an information in some standardized way and also provide this information only then all these systems can get, can get connected to automate the whole process of data management and at RDA, uh, we worked on the recommendation and we worked on this so-called MADMPs, machine actionable data management plans. And here a comparison of uh, what a traditional DMP is or was and, and, and an MADMP. So on the top, you have an example of how a DMP looked like in 2018, 2019. So basically it was a questionnaire. We were asking uh, things like who is responsible for the DMP? And the answer was free form text, very generic. Uh, for example, Moritz from our university. And the same information can be encoded when you focus on the facts. So when you use, for example, the PIDs to point to specific people. So in this case, we are using the ORCID identifier and we know exactly uh, who Moritz is. Uh, we know that Moritz is a data management manager in this in this way, in this context. And we also have an email, so we know how to contact Moritz if we need anything more regarding the DMP. So instead of modeling the questionnaires, instead of having a list of questions and then reading out the answers, which is very hard for machines to, to automatically resolve, you would have to use some natural language processing to work with the first representation, we decided to focus on modeling the facts, modeling the core information about the whole process. And this is a recommendation that was published 2019 uh, by RDA. It's a two-pager and it also comes with a very rich documentation about uh, properties. And uh, the, com the recommendation is being adopted by the uh, community. So as we are here today, we want to talk about the DMP online, DMP OPDOR, DMP tool and uh, DMP assist. But there are also other guys who, who implemented also other DMP tools, some of the infrastructures, like in Norway, uh, I'm from Austria. In Austria, we also are using MA DMPs to connect other systems. So a lot of uh, is going on. It's not that we have fully implemented everything that we, we thought of, but it's also at the stage where we know that this can work. Um, this is an example of the documentation of the DMPs because the previous example with Moritz was, was a very simple one. And here I want to show you how to read the documentation. So in the first column, you have a set of uh, fields like contact, contributor, cost, created, and so on. Then there is a description and information about what type of data is expected. If it's a string, if it's a date time, and if a specific value is obligatory or not. Most of the fields are optional, meaning you decide as the as a funder, as a person who is using MADMPs as an institution, which of them you want to use. This is an open specification here. And of course, you can put more constraints if you need. So for example, you can say DMP must always include costs or DMP must always include at least five data sets. For the technical specification, it's open. For your specific settings, it can be constrained. The DMP recommendation uh, from RDA is not a questionnaire, is not a template. This is what it really is. Yeah. Uh, some more advanced example of what we can model using the recommendation. Here you can see a data set uh, which has a title and a description. Um, and we also know uh, what is the size of data and where it will be kept. So we can see, for example, in the bottom that uh, this would be a CC by license. The data set will be kept on Zenodo and data is, is, is a structured text and we also have its size and we know that the access to the data set will be open. So this is what the recommendation allows you to, to model. And uh, to tease uh, a little bit more of how we can use this, uh, we have an example, uh, for example, in, in Austria, where we use MADMPs to connect our data repository to a DMP tool, so we can get an update that a new data set was created and added to a, a repository. 
And also what we, what we are discussing is whether we can send MADMPs directly to the funders or whether we can use the MADMPs for the automated evaluation to give the feedback to the researchers on what they are writing. Is it good? Is it not good? Can you improve it before you actually send it to the funder or before you um, uh, say this is a, a finished uh, DMP? Um, when it comes to becoming a member of the working group, because the working group is open for everyone, uh, you can join the DMP Common Standards Working Group. Um, we have almost 300 uh, members. Uh, we have a repository with files, with the presentations from the past plenaries and meetings. Uh, go there. There are very interesting presentations from adopters. You can see how others are uh, solving the uh, problem of data management and how they are using MADMPs. Uh, there are also some papers you can read about the history of our group, so how we uh, worked on the recommendation, how we involve people in the consultations, what is the format, what are the examples, and how it can be used in the uh, inst institutional context. Uh, some more papers, but I leave it for, for, the, uh, for you later to see, and uh, basically that's it. So thank you very much for the invitation and for listening. Thanks very much, Thomas. <laughs> So you're, you, you've finished a little ahead. We've got time for a couple of questions uh, for you before. We, does anyone have any, anyone here in the room have any questions, any online? Yeah, we have one online. Uh, Wim is asking the license advice. Is this encoded in any way? Uh, can we, could you just uh, repeat that again, Magdalene? Is this, en is this encoded in any way? Ah, I think that's right. the question. Um, yes, so we have in our repository, in our GitHub repository where the, where the documentation is provided, we also have JSON examples that you can work with. There is a JSON schema, and we also have an unofficial version of an ontology that maps one-to-one -one with it, but hasn't been yet officially endorsed by RDA, so you can also work with an ontology if you want. Thanks very much. Okay, maybe just... There, there are a few more if we have time. Um, Jan is asking, how is the evaluation of the DMP done manually or is there some automatic approach? Um, if it's asking about the DMPs, then I would say this is... Uh... Okay. No, if you if it's about the DMPs, I think this is a little bit out of uh, scope here. So usually DMPs are done uh, in a manual way by the reviewers. When it comes to the MA DMPs, uh, we are not there yet. We would like to have more services doing this in an automated way to help the reviewers get the important information. Mostly because the MA DMPs contain a lot of pointers, uh, meaning the present identifiers to external sources. And we would be able to pull in more information from knowledge graphs, from repositories, from registries to display to the reviewer a full idea of what's going on in the research. But this is still uh, an aspiration we have and not what is the reality. Okay, thanks, Thomas. And do you say there was one more online? Yes, yeah, sorry, there is one more. Uh, yeah, how guess. have you gone about to arrive? and well-defined RDM workflows from Lisa? Um, so when we worked on the, on the um, when the group was started, we had 18 months to work on some topic and we had to decide what to focus on and we focus on the common way to represent things. But we understood that there are other things that we, that has to be in place to make this work. And we understand that uh, having an agreement in an organization, knowing the responsibilities, knowing the, the workflow is essential, but we haven't worked on this uh, topic. This is uh, individual, depends on the context where you use MADMPs. Yeah, so here we are. We're going to give you uh, a, a very quick uh, run through uh, of the background uh, to the DMP uh, roadmap work and, and where we're going and where we are now. Um, and for me, at least, I think it's the furthest back really I can trace uh, any of this. Uh, was uh, work the DCC did before, in fact, I joined the Digital Curation Centre back in 2008. Uh, we produced uh, a checklist 
for data management plans. There's been a lot of talk at the time amongst the research community, amongst others, about the utility of this idea of a data management plan that had come from one or two areas of, of, of research, uh, and it was thought it could be applied to, to, to many, many more. The checklist was the first up attempt to provide a little standard set of things that we ought, ideas that we ought to be addressing. Uh, when thinking about data management in the context uh, of research. And it wasn't long before there was the idea of an online tool to help people construct data management plans using the questions and using the advice that we produced uh, in these checklists. And that was DMP Online. It was launched uh, in April 2010. Given that the DCC then was funded by a UK body to support UK universities, DMP Online itself was focused uh, on funders in the UK. But from the outset, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just solving a small national problem. We wanted to make sure that we had a solution uh, that would work in a wider context. So uh, colleagues there at the DCC made sure uh, that we were also able to generate data management plans in the format required by a couple of US funders, including the National Science Foundation. It wasn't long after we'd done that, that we were contacted uh, by colleagues uh, at UC3, the University of California Creation Center. Patricia Trues, then its director, contacted me saying that they were also looking at producing uh, a tool like this and was the scope uh, in collaborating. That began uh, in 2011. Uh, initially, it wasn't collaboration about code, it was collaboration about concepts and ideas. What were we trying to do with these sorts of tools? What sort of support did researchers need? What other people needed to engage in the construction and the reviewing uh, of data management plans? And how did we interface uh, with the funders? It wasn't long after that, indeed, of course, in 2013, 10 years ago here in Gothenburg, that the Research Data Alliance uh, was established. And it was at its third plenary in Dublin that the first discussions happened about the creation of an interest group on active data management plans, on moving beyond what these existing services have done to creating what we now know of as the active data management plan. That group was established uh, in 2016. And it was at about the same time that the group at UC3 uh, and, and the DCC decided to bring together what had been two separate uh, systems, two, two separate pieces of code, and go forward with a single code base. That was when we invented the, the, the concept of DMP roadmap, um, uh, and uh, that took place at an international digital creation conference. It was about the same time that the University of Alberta had been using DMP online to establish uh, their service, DMP Assistant. Uh, with support from the DCC. That itself then became part of Portage, a national service supported by research libraries across Canada, which is now uh, subsumed uh, into services provided uh, by what we now know as the Alliance uh, in, in, in Canada. And it was at RDA P9, as I mentioned before, in Barcelona, that we had the session that established three separate working groups under that active data management plan uh, interest group, including uh, the MADMP group that Tomas has just uh, presented about. And by January 2018, that effort to bring together these two services uh, had now reached fruition, uh, and all of the online services uh, that use DMP Robat were now using that code base. And I'll now try and talk a little bit about that distinction between this shared code base and the different services, the manifestations uh, of it. So. DMP Roadmap describes the thing that a bunch of contributors around the world share, but we use it to provide quite different services. I mean, services that might look different at first sight, but also services that are operated uh, in different ways. And that has some effects, I think, on how we consider what we're trying to do with machine actionability, who uh, can, can carry out particular tasks uh, and, and what our motivations are. So DMP tool, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong, primarily a collaboration between US universities, but really led by you folks at UC3. But there are others uh, who work with you to keep that service uh, uh, going. DMP Online in the UK is a subscription service. It's free to use for researchers, but we sell additional services on top of that to institutions, to funders, to national bodies. DMP Assistant, uh, on the other hand, is a funded national service from Canada provided uh, from a single place. DMP Opidor, uh, a portal for data management uh, in higher education institutions in France. And I confess I'm not entirely sure how that's 
is that funded as something national or whether that's something that you do out of the goodness of your own hearts, uh, uh, as it were. Be interesting <laughs> to hear more uh, about that. And and those names characterize those are names of services which are quite distinct uh, from the the service provided by the deployment. And and we protect i think the distinction between those services jealously indeed you know we trademark dmp online you can only call your service dmp online if we give you the okay to do it but you're happy to take that open code base dmp roadmap uh, and do what you want with it and in fact there are many other people using that shared code base more in fact that we can track one of the advantages of working openly is that anyone can take what you do one of the disadvantages is you don't necessarily know when people take your code and do interesting things with it but these are just some of the people that we do know about and if you know of any more do let us know so i'm going to hand over to diana at this point who's much closer to the actual day-to-day -day, how we work together and she's going to describe more about the uh, the current work and the future work after i've talked about the past okay can you hear me or is it a bit quiet okay so as i I put most of what uh, I need to say really on. Okay, is that better? No, can I use the big microphone? Okay, I think it's much simpler if I do it this way. Okay, so. Um, as Kevin said, I'm going to give a brief uh, overview of how we work together. Um, in the previous slide, um, picking up from Kevin, you see at the top, while we currently regard as the main contributors, I haven't selected anybody in particular. So uh, uh, on the bottom line, I haven't selected anybody in particular. I just went DMP online, DMP roadmap, and just came across uh, uh, various incarnations. So it's DMP online, DMP tool, DMP open door. And I remember Benjamin approaching us and, and wanting, oh, how do you do this? How how can we implement it? Um, and then DMP assistant in, in Canada, uh, they also uh, contribute quite a lot. They take part in our monthly meetings. And then, as I said, there are national service, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this later, but for example, there are national services like DMP Tuli, which we create um, uh, based on, uh, uh, I mean, it's still based on the roadmap code, but we go via, mostly via what's available on DMP online. Okay, um, there are national services like uh, SUNED, but they take a different format, and that's more like um, uh, the multi-tenancy format. I'll talk about that uh, in a in, uh, later presentation where I give an overview how DMP Online runs and what services we offer. It's going to be a very brief overview. And um, then you can see at the bottom, um, for example, two incarnations of it, one in uh, for universities in Catalonia, one for uh, just two in Spain, I found, one for for uh, uh, a consortium of university libraries in Spain. And this one is uh, one of the latest and nicest surprises uh, from Brazil. And we're going to hear a presentation on this later in the program. And Maria, uh, they approach Maria, is based on DMP tool, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, they came, told Maria, by the way, we've done this. And he said, well, come and show us and talk to us about it. So uh, this is coming uh, later in the program. So how we work, uh, we work as a collaborative team, uh, started with uh, mostly uh, uh, DCC and um, uh, California Digital Library. And, and now you see the more, more and more partners are uh, joining. The priorities, we decide the development priorities together. Normally we see what the tool needs, um, you know, where we could where we could go in which direction we could go uh we go and and listen to our users we get input from our users uh we get input from uh you know special interest groups we get interest uh, a lot of input from our community as to what they need and what other uh features we should implement um we share the code um and it's available online open source you can um um, we can we can circulate the link in the chat as well if that would be okay um and um the one one thing i want to highlight while we're here is that um uh, apologies for the notification that there are lots of people who ask us to do lots of things 
Right, I guess uh, Maria gets lots of requests. We certainly do as a subscription service. Can you please customize this page? Can you please implement this level of customization? Can we please add this little tweak to our, um, uh, to our page? But we try to stick as closely together to the roadmap co code as possible because we're fearing that the service could diverge far too much into different branches that don't perhaps look like the roadmap co code anymore. And we want the main tool to still work so that people can download it by people I'm in the community out there, you know, if somebody in, in Argentina decides they need a national service, we we'll want them to be able to download the roadmap code with all its features and uh, use, it, use it all. So that's why we sometimes try to stick together and we say to our users, particularly in DMP online, wait a minute, we need to check with the roadmap team <laughs> whether this will work. Okay. So the current priorities, again, they're available. You can see the link there. So the current priority is machine actionability. We think that the tool provides most of the features that you need to create a data management plan. Um, but um, what we've recently added are uh, the research outputs tab. Um, we've given a demonstration of this and I'll, uh, I'll show a bit later um, a little bit about it and what it's meant to do, but uh, it's certainly available in the DMP roadmap code. We're currently implementing it in, in um, DMP online. Integration with the Registry of Research Data Repositories. Uh, I think this is available um, already on DMP tool. Uh, we're looking for greater integration with uh, fair sharing. We're trying to implement uh, plan versioning. Our users have asked us for uh, the ability to create versions of the plan. This is kind of difficult for those who are familiar with the tool. This is kind of difficult for plan phases. Plan versioning, people want uh, users, end users, researchers have asked us, can we please have a version of the plan, plan before we received feedback from our research manager and after? Can I also have a version of the plan that I've actually submitted to the funder? <laughs> and I think, okay, we can, uh, I think we can do this, but we need to be careful how many versions <laughs> we, we create here. So we're currently working on that with our uh, user group. Another thing that uh, we're working on is the new plan creation wizard. Uh, people are, feel that it's not quite clear. Again, for those who are familiar with the tool, people feel it's not quite clear what research template, sorry, what plan template they're being offered. So we have to improve the uh, uh, template selection wizard um, to enable them to see based on their selection of the organization and funder, which templates are best suited for their plan. So that's what we're currently working on. Sorry, Kevin, I'm not uh, on this. So, uh, and we're very focused at the moment on updates to infrastructure. You know, we recently moved to Rails 6. We're going to have to move to Rails 7 this summer. Currently working on Bootstrap, update to uh, Google services. Our development priorities are listed at that URL. And I think that's me done. Great. Okay. Thanks very much, Diana. So I'm here both as your co-speaker, but also trying to keep us uh, to time. Hi, everyone. Um, it's so great to see so many people here excited about machine actionable DMPs. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what we're doing uh, with the DMP tool um, to build machine actionable DMPs. A lot of the things I'm going to talk about are things that we have built somewhat recently and some things that we are aspiring to do. But this is very much a work in progress. We have, as Tomas was kind of alluding to, we have a lot of big ideas about what we want machine actionable DMPs to be able to do, but a lot of sort of infrastructure work to get us there. So I'm going to talk about kind of what we're doing uh, with DMP tool and roadmap to help move that along. So I'm with the California Digital Library um, in the UC3 department. My colleague, Steve Diggs, is in the back there. Um, he works in data publishing. Um, I work in research data management, so primarily working with DMP tool. Um, but we also do a lot of work around persistent identifiers. So one of my colleagues um, is one of the core folks involved with ROAR, the research organization registry. So although we're based at the University of California, we have a lot of initiatives that are very international in scope. And so DMP tool, I don't have to go too much into this. I think um, Kevin kind of talked about it already. Um, the things to know about us is we are a free tool. 
We are very small staff. I have one developer and me, and we support a large number of institutions. So we've got 377 universities, medical centers, laboratories that use the DMP tool. And the way we keep that going is through collaborations like Roadmap um, and also by having a very active user community that helps me keep things up to date. Otherwise, it would be impossible to support that number of institutions all using the tool. Um, so really diving in to talk about what we have in the tool currently supporting machine actionable data management plans. A lot of our work has really focused on the use of identifiers, structured metadata using the RDA common standard that Tomas talked about that was really formative in helping us make that first step towards machine actionable DMPs. Um, so really what we've done at thus far is structure the data management plan, use the common standard. We created DMP IDs, um, so persistent identifiers uh, for data management plans. I thought I saw Christian, who was very um, from Datasite, who helped um, us sort of establish the first persistent identifier for data management plans, I think, two years ago. Um, we've got ROARs, funder registry IDs. Uh, we use RE3 data, like Diana mentioned, and ORCIDs. Um, so just a few examples of some ways in which we're doing things in the tool. Um, all researchers, when they generate a DMP ID in the plan, it's automatically linked to their ORCID profile. It shows up as a work on their ORCID profile. They don't need to do anything extra. It's all connected as soon as they register their plan with a persistent identifier. Uh, we've also um, got a new section of the plan, which is structuring descriptions of research outputs. So as researchers are describing their intended works, um, we are providing structured metadata to describe all of their outputs. So this is just some of the sort of standards we're using for that. Uh, RE3 data. Um, we also use another RDA output, the RDA metadata standards catalog, which we're going to be augmenting with fair sharing. Uh, coming up in the spring, which will be a great addition for us. Um, this is also a new thing we just added um, just a few months ago. This is a new tab called follow up. So this appears for anyone who has a persistent identifier, a DMP ID for their plan. And this is where they can update the plan. Uh, so right now it's manual. They would have to go in and enter this information. What we're building now is connections to funder APIs so that we can populate this information automatically and it won't require researchers to go in and do it manually. The reason we put it in now is we had some grant administrators who wanted the ability to go in and say, yes, this was funded. And importantly, what they want to do is they want to be able to link project outputs. So they want to be able to say, this was the plan. This is what the researchers intended on uh, producing. And here are the project outputs. So these are all of the um, all of the uh, data sets associated with the project. It could be uh, physical samples. It could be um, protocols. Anything with a persistent identifier that could be linked back to a plan uh, will show up here under research outputs. And we will talk more about that. Um, we have hopefully a video here of my colleague. Um, this is a video from Brian Riley. He's our lead developer for DMP tool. He's been with us, I think, since the beginning of the DMP tool. So there's no one who knows more about uh, the DMP tool than Brian. Uh, so I'm going to just show a video here of him describing kind of the API and some of the backend infrastructure that we've been building. XML version of the DMP that is then passed on to data site. This XML contains key information about the DMP, the individuals involved, and the funding information. If I take our example data management plan here and I open its uh, data site XML file, I can see that our creator's information was transferred over, along, uh, including her ORCID ID and her affiliation with its ROAR. I can also see the abstract. Um, the contributors, the funding information, and a link back to the narrative document. 
This is uh, available because this is a public DMP. Um, in the case where uh, the DMP is privately visible, we would omit this, uh, this link back. Um, we've been working closely with Data Sites team on their new output management plan uh, resource type, which was introduced in Schema 4.4. Um, since then, we've um, produced or registered around 1,000 DMP IDs. And once all that information's in data site, it becomes part of the larger data site ecosystem. So we can then go into tools like the data site commons, and we can explore data management plans. Um, here in this tab, I have data site commons open. Um, and I've done a partial a search for uh, the partial title for that DMP, and I can see that I got back 86 hits. Um, if I scroll down, though, in the work type facet, I can see out output management plan as one of the uh, available facets. If I click that, um, it filters down to uh, the data management plan that we've been looking at. If I open that, we will see the data site representation of our DMP. Um, this includes the title, the abstract, uh, a link back to the landing page, um, as well as the creator, uh, the list of contributors, and the funder. Um, once I'm on the record, I can then discover and do um, some digging to explore the rest of the commons to see what other links uh, can be made to this DMP. So if I click on Johns Hopkins University, for example, and I scroll down to that work type facet again, I can see that they have nine other data management plans. So if I click that, I'll be presented with a list of those specific plans. Um, and I can then um, start, here's the one we were looking at, um, but I can explore others. Um, and I can do the same as a funder. Um, rather than navigate back, I'll just open in another tab um, here. The National Science Foundation. Um, which is uh, a US, a big US funder. Um, and I can see in here, um, I've drilled into the facet, there are 55 output management plans. Um, this could be useful for uh, a funding administrator um, if they wanted to see which data man management plans are coming um, or they needed uh, you know, quick access to a data management plan. So we have also begun to add the DMP citation to the owner's ORCID record. Um, this makes it discoverable within ORCID itself um, and also gives the, uh, the creator of the DMP credit for the DMP. Um, if I click on uh, our creator's uh, ORCID record here, I will be brought to her works page where if I scroll down, I will find our DMP, um, which includes a link back to the landing page. Um, and if I expand it, um, the abstract and uh, the title. I should note that users have the ability to remove these from their record um, at any time. So as part of all of this work, we've developed a new API. Um, it, well. Uh, an extension of the original uh, API v1, which we're calling API version two. Um, this API uh, uses the OAuth 2 standard for connection. It still supports um, the use cases where a user would like access to their DMPs or an organizational admin would like access to their, their user's DMPs, but it's more focused on external system integrations. And we do that by using the RDA common standard um, JSON format to convey our information. We have a few um, additions to the common standard. Uh, notably, we include affiliations for our contacts and contributors, but we also include other 
um, DMP tool or DMP roadmap specific information like which which DMP template was used to create the DMP. Um, one such example of uh, an integration um, was a recent one done by the RSpace team. Um, RSpace is an electronic lab notebook and their users had a desire to import their data management plan directly into uh, the lab notebook. Um, this would keep this would allow them to reference the DMP more easily from the space in which they were doing their actual work um, for the you know research project. Um, I can share a few screenshots of that. Um, this particular one is uh, an example of um, the uh, OAuth 2 authorization screen that the users presented with when they want to enable this integration. Um, so within the RSpace tool, they would click on a link to um, enable the integration. Um, the DMP the tool would then ask them to authenticate and then authorize um, our space to access their DMPs. Uh, once they've done that, um, within our space, they're presented with a list of their DMPs and a button to import the PDF document. Um, once they've done that, um, they can continue with their work. And when it comes time for them to submit data sets, um, our space has created an integration where um, if the user um, submits their data set into Dataverse, it will notify the DMP tool of the Dataverse DOI. Um, and that's done automatically for the user. Um, it comes back to the DMP tool. The DMP tool's record is updated and that information, like this example, appears on the landing page. Um, this is great because the user then doesn't have to go back into the DMP tool. Um, long after they've you know, finished creating their DMP. Um, but an administrator can go in to look at this information and see the connection between the DMP and the actual uh, resulting outputs. So our API um, is documented and available on our uh, GitHub Wiki. Um, we welcome questions. Uh, we also uh, welcome any ideas for integrations. Um, so please contact us. Thank you. Pop it back to my slides. Um, so I'll just keep going in the interest of time. Um, just a few things I wanted to wrap up with. Really, our focus on development right now is supporting our users who are really responding to increasing federal mandates for data management plans and mandating data sharing um, for all federal grants. Um, we're hearing from a lot of our um, DMP tool administrators um, in terms of the library staff and grants administrators who are looking for ways that they can track research that's going on at their institutions so that they can demonstrate where that research was eventually shared. So there's a lot of questions around what is compliance going to be looking looking like um, at institutions. So we're using machine actionable DMPs as a way to give administrators insight into one, what's happening at my institution right now, what research is happening, and two, where is that data all going? Where is it eventually um, going to be deposited? So we're doing that by building on machine actionable DMPs and specifically by working with open, open metadata, open infrastructure, and DOIs specifically. Um, so I'm going to skip to the end in the interest of time, looking at some specific features that we're building right now. Um, one, we're building the ability to upload DMPs into the DMP tool so that we can generate persistent identifiers for them. This is important because we want to give as many DMPs persistent identifiers as possible, but we know some, uh, some researchers don't want to use DMP tool. They already have, they know how to make a DMP, they don't need guidance. They use the same one maybe for multiple funders. So this is a way they can generate um, persistent identifiers for those plans. Um, we're also building some new dashboards for administrators that can help administrators track what's research, what research is happening at their institution and see where it's going. So visually, we need some dashboards to demonstrate that. We're also working a lot on our API, both our API and then connecting to external APIs so that we can 
bring some of that metadata in, save researchers from having to enter data in multiple times, and also to keep things updated over time. So we're connecting mostly to funder APIs and open science graph, um, research graph APIs as well. So I kind of went fast there, um, but all of our documentation is on our GitHub. Um, we blog about this uh, from time to time as well. And I think I might have like just a few minutes for questions. I'm not sure if we went over or not, but. No, no, we do have just a couple of minutes. Thanks very much uh, for, for, for doing that. And uh, thanks to uh, Maria and to and to Brian virtually uh, for that presentation. So yeah, about three or four minutes. Um, we can take some questions. Let me know when you're ready. There's another, yeah, well, you can take that. Just, just use that one for now. Hello, thank you for the presentation. This one and the previous one. I don't have a question, but I have a comment for both of you, the RDM app and the DMG tool. I noticed that you don't include a citation file in your GitHub repository. So um, something that it is interested about the data management plan is the connection with software management plans. And in software management plans, the citation file is kind of a recommendation. So I'm just want to make a comment that maybe it's a good idea to include Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. In tools. Yeah. That came up once before and we never did it. So I appreciate that. Noted. Thank you. Uh, is, this, is this thing working? Yeah. Okay. Is it? <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah. I just had a question about access. So that was brought up a little bit in some of the earlier presentations as well. Um, and seeing that you can upload DMPs publicly, which is great, of course, but in, so the DMP has multiple sections, of course, and so right now we're kind of talking about it as a whole entity, but maybe there's sections that you want public and sections you want private, because especially the part during research, maybe you don't want your infrastructure public for good reasons, security. Uh, I'm wondering how is that, I didn't see that covered, if that's something that is being considered in the roadmap to be able to publicize yeah. certain sections and keep other sections private. Yeah, well, the way it works right now is you can get a DMP ID for a private plan. And what it exposes is high level metadata. So it would expose who the who the PIs are. It would expose like the project start and end date. Um, it would expose um, the basic metadata about your outputs. But the narrative part, like if you had a description of your infrastructure or your security practices, would not be exposed. Um, if you had a publicly available plan, all of that would be exposed. We don't have the ability to be granular right now. I could see that being useful. Um, but right now, it's pretty much you can get a DMP for a private plan, and it's just the, the, the basic metadata. Yeah. No, no, I, I didn't cover it. But yeah, good question. Yeah. Go ahead. I have a question. So probably I missed it, but so you can search for other DMPs, right? But can you also make use of these uh, DMPs and integrate parts, granular parts of the DMPs from others in your own DMP? So we have a, pub a public plans page, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, we have a public plans page where if a researcher has made their plan public, it will display and it's searchable. So I could search by fund, usually people are searching by funder. Um, so it would display all of the, um, say, NIH plans. Um, and then people, researchers definitely do borrow or reuse certain sections. But how? Is that, can I just take it and it isn't then integrated or how is it possible? Yeah, I mean, we have an API, so people could build on that. They could build an external system that did something like that. Um, we, right now, we expose it as an API. We have a, like a, a web page that you can actually search and see them as PDF files and grab what, what information you want. So um, I hope that answers your question. 